Hello friends, in today's video, I'm going to DIY the last five of my mini cutting boards that I picked up at Aldi on clearance some time back. So I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek preview. This is my favorite. Just a quick look, and you're gonna be amazed at how simple and easy that very cute rustic mini cutting board was to do. Here's another one. A couple of them I did double-sided with a paint inlay and some IOD stamps. What are we waiting for? Let's get started. These are the last of the cutting boards that I have in my stash. So we're gonna use them up. Some of them we're gonna do double-sided and these are the ones we're using today. So first of all, we're gonna get started with sanding a few of them down. I sanded in those little crevices with my little finger sander and sanded around some of the edges that were rough and on the colored ones, I sanded off just a little bit of the paint to make them look a little bit more rustic, just like I did on this little gray one. And then I cleaned them all off and got ready to paint them. So this one, I'm just gonna paint in the center with some skeleton key by DIY. And then I'm gonna use this paint inlay, and you're gonna recognize this as the one I used on that letter organizer that I did a few weeks ago. And this is my second time to use this same inlay. So we're gonna see how it turns out. Now I'm just putting this down here and I'm using this little skewer to almost cut this. I'm pressing it down in that little groove and it's almost cutting it for me, but it's making it where I can see where I need to cut it. And when I cut it, I'm gonna cut it right inside that line so that it doesn't overlap. And it fits just perfectly in there. Now I'm gonna give this one good coat, little thin coat of skeleton key. And then whenever I get ready to do the inlay, I'll give it another little thin coat to do the inlay. But for now, I'm gonna dry this down really good so I can go to the back side. And then I'm going to give the back side, the entire back side of it, one good coat of skeleton key. Maybe I did two coats. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of vintage linen and I'm going to just dry brush a little bit around the edges and then just a little bit through the center with this old chippy brush that I have. It's just an old stiff bristled brush that's old. And then I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna do the, a little bit of the um, vintage linen on the wood grain look. Now, I have this um, stamp from IOD, from the Pastiche stamp collection, and I'm just going to use this little bird on here, and I'm going to show you how I use the mask. I use the mask in a couple of these um, DIYs, and they work so great. The masks also work really good um, to help lay out your design. I'm going to show you that a little bit later, too but I stamp those little birds, they're so precious, and I just use a wet wipe to clean those stamps off and then a paper towel to dry it off. And now I'm gonna, I dried it with the heat gun to get it nice and dry, and I'm gonna put that little mask over the birds. Now I'm gonna use from the Veranda stamp collection, this lattice, and I'm gonna lay it right on top of there. Now you need to be really careful to get right around that, um, mask all up next to it and press it in really good and that turned out really good okay so i did not get on camera where i did the actual inlay on there so i did a coat of the skeleton key and pressed my damp inlay in there and then i let it dry completely and then now you're seeing me spritz it down and pulling it back I have plenty of videos where I do paint inlays. I apologize that I did not get this on camera. And now I'm drying it completely. And this is the second time I use the paint inlay and look how beautiful it looks. I love how this turned out. And I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna use to put a little um, bow around the top or wrap something around the top. The lace is really pretty, but I'm really into this um, chiffon ribbon these days and I ordered some white off of Shein. I got this off Shein and I ordered both of these ribbons that you see here um, on the same day. And so I'm just going to wrap it around a little bit and tie just a knot and then I'm going to let the tails look like a little bow. 
Now I'm going to flip it over on the other side and I'm just going to take some little teeny tiny bits of greenery and floral and a little tiny uh, pearl bead put in the side of inside of that little flower with a little bit of hot glue. I'm using my tweezers so I don't burn my fingers. And I think this just turned out precious. I love this stamp. I love the inlay and it's two-sided. What's better? Next, we're going to use some IOD transfers, and this is the Milo's transfer page book, a page out of the book, and they're all different fruits. I was going to cut a lot of different little fruits and try to place them on there, but I, I couldn't place them how I liked them, and I think you're supposed to use this whole page as one because all the little uh, fruit are numbered, so I just decided to lay it on top of there and cut it out and make it fit over the whole entire thing. And I just put it right on top of the, the natural wood color. I didn't want to paint it or anything. So I just used this rub-on transfer, and you can see I love to get that little uh, bubble on there and just push the bubble, and it, it just works good to do the transfer like that to me. And just rub and rub and rub, that transfer down into the wood and gently pull on that carrier sheet or push that little bubble up and then when it is all complete if if some of it comes up with your transfer sheet you just lay the transfer sheet back down and rub a little bit more and then I'm going to take that transfer sheet and burnish it down and then take my little sander and sand off the edges and make sure that that's all pushed down in there really nicely and that turns out beautiful. Now on the other side I'm going to use the IOD primitive mold and I'm going to use some air dry clay. Now I ordered the DOS air dry clay. I finally broke down and did it and so I'm going to put some corn starch in the molds and I was just showing you there which ones I wanted to use. I'm just using a fan brush to put that corn starch in there and I don't put a whole lot in there and it, it works just fine. Now I'm just gonna open up this DOS air dry clay. I got it from Amazon and I'm just going to, I just worked it in my hands a little to soften it up. Now I'm not the best at this, so if you want a tutorial on how to actually do this, you might wanna watch somebody else's, but I don't. it's not really that hard. You just press it down in there and you just take something like a, an old gift card or I'm using this um, knock off Cricut tool that I got at Dollar Tree and these IOD stamps are amazing. They have a little micro ledge there and you can just scrape it off to make the back all nice and smooth and even. I'm not going to show you every single one of these because it gets a little redundant but this is how I did it and then I just took that little skewer and pulled off all the little extra pieces. Now I get all my IOD and DIY products from Sammy at unicorndustdesigns.com. So please go over to her website and check out all the goodies that she has for sale. She has all the products and thrift flips and home decor makeovers and all kinds of things for sale over there. I'm going to adhere this to my project with tight bond quick and thick. And it is really thick. And this was really thick and I ended up spraying a little water on my silicone mat and putting my paintbrush in it and just making my paintbrush a little bit wet and then it smeared a little bit easier and it did not affect how it adhered at all and so you just see what i'm doing there and this air dry clay worked really good for me i did not have any cracking or any shrinkage or anything with this i was very very pleased with it so i just used the same method and 
uh, glued down all my pieces down to this um, little cutting board. I had gotten these cutting boards at Aldi some time back, and they came in a four-pack. So this one had two of the this size, the, the large ovals, and then the little round one that I just finished. There were two of those in the same pack, so there were four. And they were originally like $5 and something, which is not a bad deal. You can see how I'm piecing this piece together. I had to make two pieces. I'm just going to piece it together. Um, but these little cutting boards, I got them on clearance. They had marked them down to $2.99, and then some of them I got for $1.49. So I bought a lot of them. And so I've done a lot of projects, and I've given some away. And this is the last of them. So unless I find some more, you won't see any more mini cutting boards unless I make them myself, which is a great possibility because I have a ton of scrap wood. So I'm going to use cake batter and aviary to just paint these little pieces. And it was a little bit tedious to do, but it turns out great. So it was totally worth it. Then I'm going to take white wax by DIY and I'm going to paint it on there. And then I'm going to take a little paper towel and wipe back, wipe it back so the white wax stays in the details. And then I decide that I'm going to put a little white wax actually on the wood as well. So you see, I'm just taking a little paper towel and I'm gently, I'm doing this very, very, very gently, very gently because my air dry clay is still um, not completely set up. I'm working with it still a little bit um, wet. And then I'm just taking this white wax and just kind of waxing that wood a little bit. put a little bit on and wipe a little bit off. And I just love how that turned out. Now I'm gonna take two different types of string that I have. I have some white twine and some just some cotton string. And I'm gonna combine the two of them together and just tie it in a, a little knot there and then cut off the ends so that they're not quite so long, trim it up, and then I'm gonna unravel them so that that they look a little frayed. Not afraid, because we have faith over fear in this house, so we're not afraid. And then I'm gonna flip it over and see how it looks from the back side. And then I'm just gonna make out of, I'm gonna, oh yes, I took, this is three plies, so I unraveled it and just took one of the plies of the three ply of that twine and made a, a small little bow and it looks a little bit frayed, and that's okay because I like that look. And then I just hot glue that to the center. And this one is done. And I love that it's two-sided. I just want to pop in and say, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Kendra. You're watching Late Night Creations. And welcome back to all my regular viewers. Thanks so much. I want to take this time to tell you about something that I've been participating in that is totally amazing, and it's the Crafty Cruise Getaway. You may have heard me talk about it from uh, the one that we did in February. We're doing another one in this February, and you don't want to miss out. So I'm going to drop a little short, quick video here telling you all about it and how you can get involved. And our guest host this year is going to be Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs, who happens to be a friend of mine, and I'm super excited that she's going to come along and craft and cruise with us. So watch this. The Crafty Cruise Getaway, where creativity sets sail once again. Join us on Royal Caribbean's Mariner of the Seas, sailing out of the port of Galveston, Texas. Prepare to be dazzled as we stop in Costa Maya and in Cozumel. Just like our maiden voyage, we will host exclusive crafting workshops on sea days. We have some amazing projects lined up for you that guarantee something for everyone to enjoy. 
For the Crafty Cruise Getaway 2025, we're introducing our newest sponsor, We Create. Elevate your crafting with the state-of-the-art laser engraver and cutter, valued at over $1,500. We are thrilled to give away one of these amazing lasers as a door prize to one lucky participant. Mark your calendars for February 17th through the 22nd and join us on the Crafty Cruise Getaway for creativity, relaxation, and lasting memories. To book your spot, visit www.craftycruisegetaway.com. See you on board in 2025. Next up, we're going to use the small square gray one. It's got a little bit of a blue gray. And we're going to use this IOD transfer pack called Wallflower. And I just cut up, cut off a little blue flower out of there. And I just cut it up into all the little pieces that I wanted and I just decided the placement kind of at random how I wanted to put it on there. And I'm just going to put a little piece hanging off the side over here. And then I'm going to put the other flower on. And, you know, that's the great thing about these transfers is that you can place them wherever you want and you can cut them up. You don't have to use the transfers in one big, huge piece. I mean, they're beautiful like that if you have a piece big enough to use. But if you don't, you can just cut those flowers up. And like this was supposed to be off the side or the end of it or connected to another piece. And I just put it on the side of this little small mini cutting board. And I think it, it looks really good. And I really love the way this one turns out. And that blue with that gray just it just looks great and i had sanded it down a little bit before to make it look a little distressed i'm just burnishing it down and when you do that it it um smooths out any of the little glue pieces that might be around the edges of the transfer so i think the iod transfers have less of that than any transfers i've ever used so i'm just going to take some of the leaves and the vines and just put them kind of all over uh, where I think they look good and you know this is where you know everybody may have a different idea and think oh I would have never put that there we'll put it wherever you think that it would look good you know um, that's why everybody's projects are so individual because we all like something different but this is just how I chose to do mine and then I'm going to take my little sander and I am going to just rough it up a little bit not a whole lot because worked hard to put that on there. Then I'm going to take a little bit more of that chiffon ribbon and make a little hanger. And this one's done. So simple, so easy, and so pretty. Okay, this one is hands down my favorite. We're going to use the IOD Mercantile Stamp with this rectangular green one. And you can see, I'm going to also use the Apothecary Labels. This is These are the small letters. And I used those masks to lay out how I wanted my image to look. And that helps so much. So we're going to use this little rooster with some black IOD ink. And I'm going to stamp it him in the middle at toward the bottom and you can see that I sanded down that that um, little cutting board as well because it was a solid um, it's kind of a minty green a little bit of a minty green but I sanded it down and I'm going to stamp that little rooster right down there where you see and I'm just going to put it down hold it with one hand press it with the other Make sure that that makes contact every little piece of that and then lift it straight up. And the detail in that is just absolutely perfection. I dried it with my heat gun so that it's completely dry. And now this grain sack stripe, um, I'm going to use the tomato ink from IOD. And I've got that mask on that rooster. So this ink is going to go on the mask and not on the rooster that I stamped. 
and I'm going to press it down. Now, I did not press it down around my mask enough. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. I just didn't. And you can see when I lift that mask off, you can already see it, that it didn't go quite down far enough. But that's okay because once I sand it, it looks great. Okay, so I put these little letters from the apothecary label on there, and it's going to say Farm Fresh. But I only had one F and one R, so I'm going to do Farm Ash first. Farm Ish. My granddaughter was there. You're going to see her little hands in the frame in just a little bit. I just couldn't edit them out. I had to leave them in. Um, so I cleaned them off, and then I realized that I, I inked it all up and I only needed the FR, but I'd left the ESH on there so I could um, line it up. Maybe I already had Lexi's hands in there. No, there they are. Here they come. Um, so Farm Fresh, I love that. Here's, here's her little hands. She was in there visiting with me while I was crafting. Now I'm going to take this little finger sander and all around where that I should have gotten it closer in, I'm just going to sand it down a little bit with just the edges of that. Just soften it up so it's not quite so obvious that it stops so sudden. And then I just sand it lightly over the whole thing. Very lightly because I don't want to destroy all the details. And we both ended up loving this one. And then I'm just going to clear wax it with DIY clear wax. I'm going to seal it. And then I just put a piece of jute to as a hanger. And this one's done. And like I said, this is hands down my favorite one of this video. But let me know what you think. Okay, we have another one of the oval ones in the wood grain, and we're going to use Crinoline and Summer Crush by DIY, and this is going to be a two-sided one. This is going to be a seasonal one, so the first one's going to be a fall one. We're going to do a pumpkin with Summer Crush, and I'm using one of those makeup, makeup brushes, almost said sponge, a makeup brush, and not using a whole lot of paint on there. I'm going in circular motions and going to just put orange where I want orange. And, or the Summer Crush, it is an orange color. It's almost like UT, University of Texas color. And then I used a little bit of um, weathered wood on top of it and a little bit of aviary, a little bit of aviary on that green. And I did two coats. I did two coats of paint with this stencil. So I did, you know, a thin coat so it didn't bleed. I had no bleeding. This stencil is from Essential Sten Stencil. It's really hard for me to say that. Essential Stencil. Um, it's part of their fall. It, it, I think it has four of them in there in that little pack. I'm using crinoline to do farm and then I'm going to go and do fresh. And sometimes I like to go ahead and paint in the little areas where the letters do not connect, but I didn't in this one. For some reason, I really liked how that looked. So it says farm fresh. Then I um, dried it with my heat gun so that I could work on the other side. Now, on this side, I pulled out some transfers I had gotten off Amazon or maybe Etsy. I can't remember if it was Etsy or Amazon. I've had these in my stash for quite some time, but I believe this is redesigned by Prima, and it was going to work perfectly this one particular one fits perfectly on here so i'm going to take some vintage linen and i'm just going to put a very very uh, light coat of paint a little heavier than a dry brush maybe just a, dry, a heavy dry brush on there and then i'm going to just sand it where it's a little bit smooth so that it's you know the paint is smooth for the transfer i'm going to take the transfer off the carrier sheet place hover it where I make sure it's where I want it before I let it touch because once it touches, there's no picking it back up. And then I'm going to do that same process of rubbing it down with the little um, plastic 
stick that comes with the transfers and then just lift and rub as I go down and it, it comes up really easy. These, these transfers go on really nice and easy too. And so this is a really cute little transfer um, for a very vintage Christmas look. I love two-sided things that are fall and Christmas because then you don't have to put it all away. And there we go. And we're going to burnish it and sand the edges a little bit where we had a little overhang and just smooth out the top. We're going to seal it with some clear wax. Both sides. Seal both sides. Oh, we're going to sand this side a little bit first. And if you get a little paint somewhere, then you can just sand that off. Not sure why I was sanding my finger, but okay. Oh, I was telling you I was using the corner of it. I just use the corner of it sometimes just to sand. Okay, I have a little piece of black and white checked ribbon, and I just cut it and dovetailed the ends of it. And I'm just going to tie a little piece of embroidery thread in the center to pinch it up to make it look like a bow, a teeny tiny little bow. And I decided that it was still a little bit too big, so I did cut it down just a tiny little bit more. And then we're going to just use a little dab of hot glue and glue that there. I'm going to make a little tiny twine bow and put a little dab of hot glue. And we're going to put it right there. And this one is complete. So let me know in the comments which one of these mini cutting boards is your favorite. That's it for the video. That's it for my mini cutting boards. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you are inspired to create, recreate, and make some beautiful home decor. Let me know which one of those is your favorite in the comments below. Be sure that you hit the thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. A lot of people have been getting unsubscribed lately. Just make sure that you're subscribed. It helps my channel out a lot. We're getting closer and closer and closer to that 10,000. And I can't wait to mail this amazing box of giveaway away to one lucky subscriber. But most of all, I want you to remember to be still and know that he is God. <laughs>